to the Cozy Meadow Knits podcast. This is episode 13. My name is Sophie and I am coming to you from my camper, which is located in Shidiac, New Brunswick, Canada. Um, and this is my knitting podcast, uh, where I share all my knitting adventures, um, finished objects, works in progress, some dream knitting, and at the end, usually um, some acquisitions, and I do have a few acquisitions because it's been quite a while since I've recorded. Today is August 26th. Um, it's a Friday evening. I am totally ready for the weekend. Um, the kids are actually, my daughter's at a county fair, and uh, my son is jumping off a wharf <laughs> with my nephew. And um, I have sent my husband in the bedroom, <laughs> which is right over here. So hopefully there won't be too much noise. He's supposed to have his headphones on and everything muted. But anyway, hopefully nothing too crazy happens. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I am still podcast. I'm still recording in my camper. Um, we are here for another week. We've been um, in our camper all summer and it's amazing. It's it's kind of our cottage. So it's it's long enough to house everyone. Everyone has a bed and the kids have a bedroom and we have our bedroom and um, yeah, it works great. We have a deck and I have my swing where I can knit outside and I have knit a lot this summer. Um, okay, so I think, oh, yes. You can find me on Ravelry as Cozy Meadow Knits, and I am very active on Instagram as Sophie's underscore knits underscore and underscore things. Um, uh, everything, everywhere where you can find me will be linked down below in the show notes, as well as any any patterns, any yarns, or anything I talk about, I will try to link all the information down below. If ever you have a question or if ever I forget to mark something down and you're wondering what it was, just let me know uh, in the comments below or uh, send me a message on Instagram and I will gladly answer. Um, okay, I think that's pretty much it for administration. Um, let's just get on with the nitty goodness. Okay, so yes, this summer. Um, it's been like a month and a half, I think, since I've last recorded. I don't remember the exact date, but yeah. So we've been, since the last episode, we've been on vacation. We had two and a half weeks of vacation. It was amazing. Um, we had a few trips. We went to Halifax for two nights with the kids. Um, and we've had a couple of long drives. We went tubing on the Miramichi River, which was super fun. Um, we do that every year. I highly recommend it. Um, so yeah, lots of car drives, long drives, and, um, so lots of knitting time for me. Mm. Uh, okay. So what have I been knitting on? Do I have any finished objects? Yes, but only half. Half of a finished object. And I will share this now. Uh, okay, yeah. So this is my finished object. And it is... This is the Soltis socks. They are by Marina, who is known as Marimai. On Instagram and she also has a podcast I will link her down below as well as um, the project page and the Ravelry page for this pattern so Marina contacted me and she asked me if I would like to test knit her very first pattern and I said of course I was totally excited to try it out and this is what I got it's a beautiful colorwork sock um, okay, so details on the sock. It is a paid for pattern, um, but it's a very, very fun pattern to knit up. 
many firsts, firsts on this project for me. Um, these socks are, the pattern is written to be knitted toe up, which was the first time I've ever done that. Um, also, it's a color work sock, and that is the first time that I was doing color work on a sock. Never done that before. Um, what else? Oh, yes. So I quick, I'm usually, I'm team DPN. Okay, so when I knit my socks, I knit them on 2.5 millimeter needles, DPN needles. And I quickly, <laughs> I didn't even know, I quickly realized that I was not going to be able to knit these toe up on DPNs because you have to do um, a magic, Judy's magic cast on, I think that's how it's called. Um, yeah, and I quickly realized I couldn't do that with DPNs. So I went to my local yarn shop and um, she will be linked down below, uh, La Violette Yarn Gift and Co. Uh, yeah, so anyway. I went to the yarn shop and I asked my gnaw, I was like, I need some needles for toe up socks. I have no idea how to do mag I know how to do magic loop, but I've never done it for socks. So anyway, so she hooked me up and she gave me, do I have them here? I don't think I have them here. Anyway, she gave me Chow Gu um, fixed circulars, 2.5 millimeter. Those needles are amazing. Like they are the Cadillacs of knitting needles for me. Anyway, I don't, I don't have, this is my first pair of Chagu. So first pair of Chagu, Chiaogu. I don't know how you say that. Is, is that okay? Chiaogu? Anyway, you know what I mean? Um, so it was the first time that I was using those needles and they are very pointy, which I adore. I adore oh they're just amazing anyway so I cast on with that with those needles magic loop and I went along did the color work on the toe I'll show you right here and just it's super super cute super cute so that's the color work and then you knit up the foot and then the heel I don't know if you can see Okay, yeah. So the heel is a short row, German short row heel, which I've done in German short rows. Um, I've done them before. I've never done them in a heel. The only heel that I've ever done before was our, a slip stitch heel and gusset. So that was a first as well. And then you knit the leg and then you do this color work at the top. And then you finish off with uh, some ribbing on the top. This sock, so I chose the 64 stitch because this is what I usually knit for myself or um, for the size of my feet. And this sock is beautiful, but it doesn't fit. <laughs> it doesn't fit. Oh my goodness, it is so tight. I cannot bring it up past my heel it just doesn't want it, to it's no it's ridiculous it's so tight that is not the pattern's fault at all I checked the pattern and like the pattern is exactly the same as any other 64 stitch it is because I am such a tight knitter and I guess I've learned on magic loop yeah I need to go up a size for if I ever do my socks on magic loop again yeah but i did learn i did learn and i will knit these up again uh i didn't do the second sock i know what you're gonna say you're gonna think oh you can give them to your daughter and no my daughter has the same big feet that i do <laughs> so i really don't think that these will fit anyone that i know so i will knit these again though because they were super fun they were i I think I knit this in like, I don't know, like six days. And for other experienced knitter, uh, knitters, this might be like a long time, but I only have a few hours a day to knit. So anyway, that's the story of the Solstice sock and all of my firsts with 
this pattern. And it was great because I learned a lot. Thank you very much, Marina, for letting me test this and um, learn so much. Um, yeah, so that is my only finished object. Uh, the other thing that I forgot to talk about is what I am wearing. I've worn this before in a, a previous episode. This is my uh, Everyday Tea by Julianne Knitter. It is my favorite, my favorite, I think it's my favorite summer knit. This one and the Astra Tea that I made um, this summer, I've worn them like crazy. This t-shirt fits me like a dream and I love it. And I know that um, Julianne has another pattern. She just released a pattern, I think it was last week, and it's called Olive Branch Tea. I will link that one down below because I bought it. And it's it's very similar to this t-shirt and it looks like kind of like the same fit. So I was like, yes, it has a different um, lace motif on the top. And so I bought it right away on release day because I want that t-shirt as well. I have no idea when I am going to knit this t-shirt, but by next year, by ne next summer, I will knit it and I will let you know. Um, okay, so that's what I'm wearing. Um, to continue on, I totally forgot what yarns I used for this sock. I'm very rusty. I'm trying to be very um, more professional in my podcasts and to try to speak clearer and not to babble. <laughs> it's really hard. Anyway, but yeah. So for the colors that I used for uh, the sock um, is, what did I use? Oh, it was, it's the Heritage, Cascade Heritage. I used Cascade Heritage for the main color, which is macadamia. And uh, this macadamia, macadamia, macadamia. So that's the main color. The toe and cuff is pumpkin spice again cascade heritage i am in love with this color oh it's really great and the pop of burgundy is uh by loops and threads um bought at michael's it was left over from a shawl that i had previously made and when i put these three colors together it just went well and it was like it's totally fall and I was getting totally fall vibes with this. So so those are the colors that I used. Again, all of the details are on my Ravelry page for this. Okay. Now, what is the... Okay, so the other thing that I've been, like, knitting on crazily. Crazy. Crazily. I'm French. So if I make up words, I'm sorry. Bear with me. <laughs> okay, so, oops, I think I just clicked the microphone. I've been knitting on a lot on my, it is called Past the Honey Cardigan, and it is by uh, Top of the World Knits. And it is on Ravelry, and it is a free pattern. This is my first cardigan. And I'm already in love with it. This is going to be very, very hard to show. But so since the last time that I recorded, I think I had just done about this much from the bottom. It is knit bottom up. It is knit flat bottom up. And so you start with some ribbing, one by one ribbing, and then you do this honeycomb stitch. And so since... I've last recorded it has grew it has grew it has grown oh my goodness it's Friday night <laughs> okay so it has grown I have since finished off the body so this is the back of it and I will show you what the stitch is supposed to look like when it's all 
See, it looks like honeycombs. Um, yeah, so I have finished the body and I have finished one sleeve, which is here. And so, yeah, so the pattern gets you to do a three needle bind off to attach the front panel and the back panel together. It's a drop shoulder construction. And then you knit up the sleeve. And then you do some one by one ribbing at the end of the sleeve. Now, I would be done, I would be a lot farther on this knit, but I have. I think I have completely ripped out this sleeve like three times. It's not really the pa it's not the pattern's fault for the sleeve. Um, it was just it was incredibly tight. So the first time when I first started to knit the sleeve, uh, I was going through the pattern and following it exactly how it was saying. I had to decrease every other row or whatever the pattern says. And I did that and I kept trying it on and I'm like, Ooh, that's snug, that's snug. But I'm like, no, it should be fine because it looks like kind of big on the picture for the pattern in Ravelry. So I got to like this much and I'm like, this is ridiculous. It's way too tight. So I ripped back and then restarted it again. And then I stopped decreasing at a certain point and then I tried it on again and it was still too tight so I ripped back again and third time's a charm it I I don't re I don't remember how to do how many decreases I've done but if you do knit this just keep trying on the sleeve and see if it's already snug here do not continue to <laughs> Well, anyway, you know your arms, so however you want it snug or how loose you want it. I think you could even go, if you want a, a really loose, you know, relaxed fit, maybe only do a couple of decreases too. It's all by preference. So I only did a few decreases and then I continued on with the pattern and then I just did um, a rat, two rounds of knitting for the, and I rapidly decreased and then did this ribbing. So one sleeve done and I am almost done with the second sleeve and this one's fitting good. I only, I only did it once. <laughs> so that's good. And then once that sleeve is done, I will pick up around, all around the edge on the back of the neck and then again on the other side. And then you do a one by one rib and you do it for about three inches or so. So yeah, so this, this, this is the past the honey cardigan. Um, it is made, okay, so the yarn that I am using is Cascade 220. I'm not sure of the color number, but everything is listed in my Ravelry page. I had to go up a needle size to get gauge. Again, because I'm a tight knitter, I pretty much have to go up a size of needles on anything I knit. <laughs> I tried to be a looser knitter and I'm like, don't be so tight. And I don't know, it's just natural to me to be a tight knitter. I don't feel like it's tight, but it's tight. <laughs> and that is my past the honey cardigan. So hopefully I have this done by the, by the next time um, I podcast. And I'll have a warm and comfy, cozy cardigan for fall. So my next project that I was knitting on during the summer, during our vacation, is on my Orbitz sweater. I love it so much. I finished the body 
And so yeah, so I finished the color work. I had already finished the color work. Uh, I think I showed that off on one of the previous episodes. And then I think I was up to like here when I started knitting on it again during my vacation. And this is amazing car drive knitting. And so just knitting round and round. And then you do a twisted rib on the hem. And that's pretty much it. Uh, this is a pattern by Unwind Knitwear. Unwind Knits. Mm. I will list it here below. Uh, the designer's name is Rachel. Rachel Ilsley. I think that's how you say it. I'm not sure. But she, oh, her designs are gorgeous simply gorgeous and I am so happy that I am now that I only have the sleeves left to do so after after some knitting I want to return to this because I really do want to wear this this fall the yarn that I used for this uh, again it's all listed on my Ravelry page um, the main color is by Cascade it's Cascade Refine uh, which is, it is, um, it's merino, but it's a hundred percent recycled yarn. So there's, uh, I think there's merino. I have one here, but it's not in the same color, but it says, okay. Yeah. So it's 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon and 5% viscose. And it's a hundred percent recycled. So I really do enjoy working with this yarn and the color work is a gorgeous color. It's called Good Vibes and it's by Leo and Roxy and it's on their MCS base and it's gorgeous. Oh, I love this sweater. I really do have to uh, do the sleeves soon, soon. Um, another project that I was working on. I was not working on before um, on my last podcast so I I casted this on after recording my last podcast and it is it's gonna be hard to show this one too it is called the half and half wrap and it is a pattern by Pearl Soho and it is a free pattern um, Maybe I will try to put a picture of it somewhere because this is going to be very, you're not going to have much of an idea of what this looks like if you've never heard of this pattern, but a lot of people have knit it up. Of course, I am halfway in a, in a row, so I'm just trying to figure out how to show it off. So basically, I have knit about, what, four or five inches maybe? on it and the pattern basically it's garter stitch so the pattern is a huge square which is divided in half into triangles and um, you can choose two colors and so one triangle is one color and the other triangle is another color and then you can like fold them together and just wrap yourself in lovely garter stitch. Um, and that's basically the pattern. The colors that I am using are from Cascade Refined. They're both Cascade Refined yarns. Um, this color is gorgeous. It is a brown cinnamony. It has a heather. It has different colors. It has like bits of orange and reds yeah i'm looking at it and you i'm not even showing it on the camera so it's hard to it's hard to show in this light but it's a beautiful cinnamon fall color of course you know i love fall and so this will be the second color now the color number is in my project page and this is the color eight this is the color eight so it's kind of like kind of like a blue jeans like a, a light blue jean color so i thought that these two colors went very well together and so 
I don't know when this will be done. It takes a long time because the rows are really long. But so on the first triangle, you cast on like, I think it's 260 or 240, I'm not sure, but stitches, which is a lot, a lot of stitches. But so you knit and then you, you decrease, you decrease every time. You do kind of like a German short row at the end and then so it goes smaller. It's slow. <laughs> For me, it's a bit slow, but I haven't, um, I haven't knit on this in a little, in, in a little bit because I have so many test knits going on and trying to finish up my cardigan and yeah. So I will definitely return to this again because I really love the colors, but in the meantime, it's going to go in hibernation for a little bit. And I think that is pretty much everything that I can show that I have been knitting on. Uh, I am also knitting two test knits, which will be three soon. <laughs> um, I am knitting a test knit sock for Nancy Wheeler. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I can say much about it. I cannot show it yet. Uh, but when I probably the next time that I podcast, I think I will be able to show it off. So I already have one sock done. I need to do the other sock for that. And I am, will be testing another sock pattern for Nancy um, in a couple of days or in a week. Um, we'll get that pattern and I'll be testing on that pattern too. And as soon, I think that one I will not be able to show for quite a bit. But anyway, so I will I will be knitting on that too. And I am also knitting a test knit for, for a shawl. It's a shawl. It is a test knit. It is a uh, design um, by Marie-Elise Dugal. Um, I have test knit a sock for her uh, before and um, she actually will be releasing another sock pattern I think in the next few days and it will be a free pattern as well. So look out on uh, Instagram. If you're on Instagram, I will be sharing that for sure. Um, I saw the sock pattern. It's great. It's really, really cute and it will be free. Um, but yeah, so the test knit that I'm doing for her right now is for a shawl and it's a mystery knit along. So that's why I cannot show you the shawl. I've only started, I'm like this much done. Um, I only started a couple days ago and it is a, it's a mystery knit along. Don't know if I have all my notes here. Okay, so I checked for to make sure that I had the correct information for the mystery knit along. So how to participate? You go on the Tippy Tree Yarns website, and she has kits for the mystery knit along um, on pre-orders. And then so you buy your kit, and you will receive your kit in October. And the mystery knit along uh, starts in November. So it goes for four weeks. So every week you will, um, you will open up a little bundle of yarn and we'll have instructions to do a certain section of the shawl. And then you do that for four weeks. And at the end of the four weeks, you have a beautiful shawl. Now I can tell you that the shawl design is very very beautiful um the inspiration i was saying it was mary poppins and then i was like no it's sound of music no it's inspired by julie andrews <laughs> that's why i had both i had both movies in my head but yes it is inspired by julie andrews um so i asked maria elise to see if i could show you the colors that i chose now I'm just testing the um, the design, so I'm testing the pattern, and I used my own yarn um, that I had. I've been buying yarn like crazy, and so yeah, I I used my own yarn. But to participate to this knit along, to this mystery knit along, you need to purchase a 
kit from Tippy Tree Yarns. I will have all the information down below if you are interested. I am not sponsored at all, but I did want to mention it because I want to show you the colors. Oh, okay. So I am using mostly colors that I had in stash, but I do have some new colors, which actually was, these colors were not bought for this purpose, for this shawl. But um, yeah, I've been putting, I've been trying to put colors together and anyway, I finally, I finally decided on a color scheme and I am in love. Okay. Uh, the first color, well no, actually I'll just show you, it. the shawl is a, it uses, I don't know, well yeah, it uses five colors, let's say. I don't want to give anything away that I'm not supposed to, but I know I can show the colors, so I will just say it uses five colors. And these, these are the colors. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They are so gorgeous. I'm going to show you the colors individually, but just really quickly. But, oh, okay. So the first color I have here, it's by Alley Cat Yarns. It is a gorgeous color. It is called Rusty Maroon. I've had this in my stash for a little bit. Um, I'm actually knitting a t-shirt with this, but I bought three skeins and I'm pretty sure I will have enough left over to use in the shawl. So I'm using it. So we'll see. If ever I don't have enough, I'll just buy another skein. That's okay. So this is the first color, Rusty Maroon. It is a beautiful, beautiful tonal. Uh, you know, this is my color. <laughs> I love it so much. That's the first color. Well, it's, yeah, it's one of the colors. This, this one's blowing out a little bit. Uh, but yeah, this is by Sweet Skein of Mine, and it's delicious. It really is blowing out. I don't know how... Maybe more like this. It has a sheen to it too, so that's why it's kind of shiny. But anyway, uh, there's, I can't tell you the color name because this was from the advent calendar that I bought last year. And I knew when I saw this little skein, I like, I put it aside and I'm like, this is going to be going in something special because it was my favorite color. <laughs> of course, it was my favorite color in the yard advent and it will be in a very special project. So I'm so happy I found a good home for it. Um, the other color that I am using is this gorgeous, gorgeous gold, dark golden straw. I don't know. It's blowing out a little bit. It's a little bit darker than this, that, than what it's showing up as. Yeah, maybe like this. Anyway, it's very, very, very nice. This is Sassy Strings Yarn. I have... Where is the ball band? I don't know. I had it here. Oh, it fell. Okay, yes. This is from Sassy Strings. She was having a sale a couple months ago, and I had been eyeing her yarns for a while she is a yarn dyer that's my hair i'm sorry <laughs> i shed like crazy um so yeah there's more hair what's going on uh yeah sassy strings yarn the color is amber she is a yarn dyer out of ontario and um this is on her sassy sock base it's 75 superwash merino and 25 uh, percent nylon so I bought two skeins of her yarn. I bought this one and I also bought this one, which is not going to be in the shawl, but I'll show you. Also, this is a lovely, lovely color. I was actually thinking of using it in the shawl as well, but um, I'm going to keep it for something else special. And so this is the same base and the color is called Breathless. Anyway, go check her out her colors are gorgeous um she has gorgeous gorgeous tonals this i'll be purchasing again from her because it's really i love her colors 
And the other thing that I wanted to say is that you get 463 yards in a skein. That's a lot. And it's 100 gram. And it says it's a four ply. So you get a lot of yardage out of these skeins. So anyway, go check her out. That's one of the colors. What else? I'm going to try to go a little bit faster. The other color is another color by Alley Cat Yarns. This is a leftover skein that um, I had bought for my Whitmore sweater, which oh, I love. And I love this deep teal color, which is exact. No, it's dark teal. Uh, that is the name of the color. This is on her silk yak fingering um, base. 80% merino, 20% uh, 20, 20 silk, and 20%, no, sorry, I don't have my glasses on. 60% superwash merino, 20% silk, and 20% yak. And 400 yards to 100, to 100 grams. Lovely, lovely tonal. So that's the other color. I think, is that it? One, two, three. I have five colors. One, two, three. Where's the other one? Oh, here. Sorry, I just have too much yarn on, on my couch here. This is oh, it's so nice. I, I hope it shows up correct, like good. I think it is. This is by Yarn Indulgences. This is Indulgent Silky, and it's very indulgent. Um, yeah. 50% non superwash merino. Oh, that's interesting. I love that. And 50% silk. Yum. So it has all sorts of colors. It has some teal in here, and it has some of. There's a little bit of purple. It's, it's a little, yeah, here. Oh, you, now you can see it more. So this is going to be another color. I got this at the yarn festival that I went. First yarn festival, first fiber fest. Uh, I went to Tatamagouche two weeks ago. I think it's two weekends ago already. And I had a blast. I'll talk about that later. But yeah, so this is one of my one of my gems from the Fiber Fest. So happy. And those are my colors for the shawl. And it's going to be fabulous. I'm about, like I said, this much in. And I can't wait to knit on it again later tonight. Uh, what else? So that's it. So that's it for what I am um, working on currently. I do have some dream knitting and I can share that with you if you would like. <laughs> um, hopefully you're not too bored yet. Um, some dream knitting. Okay, I purchased some yarn from the yarn sh from my local yarn shop again. And yeah, because I'm always there. I'm there too often. Uh, okay, so this is yarn. It's a yarn cone. I love this color. It's it's showing up a little bit more teal than it really is. It's more of a green, but it has some teal bits in it. It is by Julie Asselin, and it's nurtured fine. So it's a light fingering, and it's very, very fine. I don't know if I can find the end to show you, but it's, oh yeah, here, here, yeah. So it's very, very fine, but I bought this because I have another pattern by Rachel Ilsley that I want to cast on soon. I would love, I, I'm itching to cast on this sweater but I really have to finish the ones that I have on the needles. So I'm trying to be really, really good and not cast on anything new, big, like a big sweater or something like that. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to clear off my needles before casting this on, but I will be casting on the Sculp sweater and I will put a picture here somewhere of it. And yeah, I actually won, um, she was doing a giveaway and she was giving away uh, 10 patterns 
and um, she contacted me and said I was a winner and I was like right on because <laughs> I knew I wanted to knit other patterns of hers and so I chose the sculpt and I chose this yarn so I can't wait to knit this is the first cone that I've ever bought yay I finally have a cone of yarn and I bought two so I bought two of these cones <clears throat> um I don't know how many yards there. oh it's dark uh 70 no 780 yards in here so I bought two I should have enough for a sweater yay well I highly recommend I haven't knitted with it yet but I'm like I know I'm gonna love it so that's one of my future knits what else do I have oh yes I purchased this yarn during our vacation in our two-day escape vacation to Halifax, Nova Scotia. We had a ball. Uh, the kids loved it. We, we didn't, oh, it was super, super, super hot. Yes, it was super hot. But um, we did a few tours. We went on a hopper, which um, it's a big kind of, it's not a bus, but it, it was, Something you get on anyways, there's like 40 people that can fit on it and it drives on the street and then it drives in the water and it goes in the water. So that was fun. We had a ball. And so we went on the wharf and then we walked to a garden, which actually is the footage at the beginning of the podcast. Uh, those are... Um, some pictures, some videos that I took from a garden there. I think it's called the Royal Garden or something. Um, it has to do with, like, it's the only Royal Garden, I don't know if in the Maritimes or in Canada, maybe not in Canada, but in the Maritimes. And they have this big gate at the very beginning of the garden, and only the Queen of England can go through those gates. So when we went, the gates were closed. <laughs> we had to walk around the gate <laughs> to get in. Beautiful, beautiful spot. Um, there was a lot of places that we had never been in Halifax. We're not very far. It's only about two and a half hours from here. But yeah. Anyway, we had a blast. And I went to a yarn shop. And I bought this. It is Jody Long. This is the first time that I have seen this yarn. And I bought three balls of this, and this is a DK weight. At least that's what it was, that's what it said over there. And it is, oh my goodness, I need my glasses. Haha, -ha. found them. Ah, uh, yes, growing old. Um, it is 50% wool, 25% up alpaca, and 25% viscose. It has little tweedy bits so it's a gray yarn with kind of like navy blue tweedy bits i thought it was really cute um so i have decided to cast on not now but in the future it's on my notes i forget the name of it it is called ah. oh it's called cat number one I will post a picture and it is by Pia Trans. And it's it's kind of like a long sleeve t-shirt, kind of like here um, on the pattern. I would like to make it, if I have enough yarn, I would like to make it three quarter length sleeves. It would be great for fall. I have no idea when am I gonna <laughs> when in the world am I gonna knit this? I don't know, but I want it now. So I got a lot of knitting to do. Um okay, yeah. So I want to knit that. What else do I want to knit? I want to knit everything. Um, I, so I talked about mystery shawl. Oh, uh, there is one last thing that I know that I want to knit for this winter, and it is a cowl. And it is called The Endless Woods Cowl by Snickerdoodle Knits. Um, I have two of her patterns right now in my library. And I actually, I won a 
giveaway uh, from her and it was for a skein of yarn and uh, I don't have it here I have it at home a beautiful skein of yarn and a project bag and a few enamel pins they're really cute thank you so much um, a snickerdoodle knits and yes Yes, so I want a pattern as well of my choosing. I could choose one of her patterns and I chose, I forget the name of the pattern, but it is gorgeous. It's a huge shawl. I will um, list it down here. Um, that shawl is beautiful and it will be made sometime in the future. Um, what else? And a cowl. I actually bought the uh, cowl pattern because I really, really loved the construction of it and how she has different sizes for it. Um, I think there's a small, there might be a small, medium, and large. Um, but I think I want to make medium. Anyway, it's kind of like a cowl, but it's not like all the same size on the sides. It's kind of like, kind of like a cone shape in a way. And so it's closer to your neck here and then it goes wider here. So... I think it's going to be lovely um, I think I'm going to have I'm going to use maybe like it's a DK weight so I might buy or I might try to use something in my stash uh, for it like a fingering weight and uh, yarn and um, what is it called it's called mohair yes mohair I was like silk no it's not silk silk more hair or just more hair with it and it's going to make a DK weight and yes it's lovely I will post a picture somewhere of that and that's another thing that I want to knit I want to knit all the things it's so it's consuming me and I'm really hot now but I'm cold I know I can see that I'm red I'm turning red so my face is super hot but my hands and fingers right now are super cold. So that's kind of nice. Okay. Um, almost done. If you're, if you're still here, I love you. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to share. Okay. Yeah. So last two weekends ago, I went to the fiber festival with Manon from La Violette Yarn Gift and Co. She allowed me she allowed me to tag along and um, I was able to help out at her booth. Um, it was, I don't know if I mentioned, it was in Tatamagouche in Nova Scotia. Super, super cute little town. Like you blink and it's over, you, you missed it, but it's so quaint. We stayed in, I will try to post a picture because it's so cool. We stayed in a train caboose. Yes, a train caboose. Um, it's an older train and they have renovated the inside. There's a dining cart and um, we stayed. There's, I didn't see all the other cabooses, but the one that we stayed in had two bunk beds and one bed and it has a bathroom, a shower, a toilet. It's, it's, it's really, really cool. And the outside of it, it looks like the Harry Potter train like it was so cool I will I will post pictures because it was really awesome so we were me Manon and um, that's Manon is a shop owner and um, Faye so we were three and we I had a blast oh my goodness did I ever have a blast so it the show was the fiber fest like the show for the vendors was only one day it was saturday from like in the morning it started at 10 and then it went on to four i think i saw so many people i met i met amanda from sweet skein of mine for the first time finally i was so excited she is so so nice oh my god she's so nice such a lovely person i can't wait to hang out or to meet you again amanda um, I did purchase some yarn from Amanda. Maybe I'll go. Th okay. So I did purchase yarn from Amanda. I got this beautiful skein. It was really hard to choose, but I got this one. I bought myself this one and it is called Brick. And it is Merino, Cashmere, and oh, 
merino cashmere or nylon i just love the color but i know it's really soft but yeah cashmere hello yes okay so this is gorgeous i have no idea what i'm gonna do with this one but i almost used it in my shawl but uh no i'm gonna keep it for something else what who knows uh, okay, so I got that from Amanda, and then I got this one that I showed off from Deborah from in, um, Yarn Indulgences. So Deborah was there, and this is the one that I chose, that I purchased from Deborah. So thank you. Um, yeah, and that was what is the color is. Color is oak. The color is oak. Uh, who else? Oh, I met a lovely viewer, Yvonne, if you're there. Hello, Yvonne. Um, I got to meet Yvonne. She is such a lovely knitter, such a lovely person. Um, yeah, so we already followed each other on uh, Instagram. But yeah, I didn't know her profile. It was her. So anyway, I got to chat with Yvonne and I got to meet Alexa um she, oops <laughs> we have Alexa. I, don't know that one. I know you don't know her um yeah i have alexa in the uh camper and she just heard me so <laughs> um so i met her i she, we're we're in the same test groups um test knit group for nancy so i had never met her before but we've been chatting on instagram all the time so it was just a really fun time I met so many people I had a smile plastered on my face the whole day like the whole day and not many times because it was busy but at a f like a few minutes here and there I would go and do like a loop of the arena and go see everyone and I would just like see people and I was like hello and I Oh, they must have been. They must have thought I was so crazy. But anyway, it was amazing to be surrounded by so much yarn, being high on yarn fumes, and being around so many awesome, talented crafter and makers. Like, seriously. Um, yeah, I bought a basket. Oh, I have to put a picture here of the basket. I hope I have a picture. But yeah, amazing from Savoy Baskets. Oh, it's going... If I don't have a picture here, it will be on my next podcast because it's going right in front of my fireplace. Um, and I also got these. This is the last thing I'm going to show, I promise. Um, I got these from Red Island Fibers. Oh, so I follow Red, uh, Red Island Fibers on Instagram for a long time now. Um, they are out of PEI, P -E -I, which is another one of my favorite provinces. I love the island and I am going to the island at another Fiber Fest with La Violette again. Um, Manon has agreed to that I can tag along again and help out. And so uh, that will be in September around like the 24th or the 23rd, I'm not sure. It's on the weekend of September. I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. And so I bought these two skeins from... Oh, they're so lovely. Now, this is blowing out a lot. This is more, again, cinnamony. It's It's way more orange. I wish I could show you the real, real color. It's delicious. And I bought this one too. And it's got all of these beautiful colors there's like teal and all bits of beautiful colors this is gramps shirt and this one is fallen for you and i have fallen for this color hard <laughs> okay so those are all my purchases i think that's it that i have for yarn yes i think i went through everything um Last thing is that on my last episode, I had said I will do a little giveaway and I am going to go and do a comment picker something for YouTube 
and um, I'm going to choose a winner right after I stop recording this and what I am giving away I made it's not it's not professionally made but it's made with love it is a little um, notions bag notions pouch it's not a bag it's a pouch and it has a zipper it's a little bit kind of quilted it's not straight I apologize but I tried my best I really love this little fabric and I had some and I'm getting I'm getting pretty good at making these it, they're, again they're not they're not um, professional or anything but I have one and it works oh my goodness I'm so red <laughs> oh, oh this is so warm Where is it? okay anyway yeah so this is the inside it's just a little pouch and it's super useful I use mine all the time and I made a few progress keepers I don't know I don't have a really good camp I don't have a really good camera let me pick that up okay that didn't work out so I made one stitch marker no I made a couple of st three stitch markers and one progress keeper so I don't know if you'll be able to see it so it's a little tr tree of life and that's not focusing very well you know what I'm gonna post a picture I'm gonna take a picture because my camera is not working well but yeah so I have three stitch markers and they're all like different they're all different size of rings like this so if you have a big project you can use one of the bigger rings and if you have a tinier project you can use the other ones and this is a stitch marker anyway so the lucky winner of that I can't tell you right now I will insert a video right after this and to announce the winner so congratulations to whoever wins this okay I think that's it I think that's it so I would just like to say thank you so much for coming back and you know returning and watching this uh, returning viewers thank you so much uh, for those of you who are new thank you so much for watching and to sticking through the whole episode if you liked this video please like and subscribe or don't that's okay <laughs> it's okay I just do this for fun um, I just love talking about my knits and talking about knitting and talking about yarn so if you do too, then we're friends. Um, I wish you the best three or four weeks. Hopefully I'll be back sooner this time. I should be, we'll be back, move. We will be moved again at the house in a week. So I should have time to record. And um, again, thank you so much for viewing, for watching and coming back. Have a great, great day three, four weeks. Stay healthy, stay safe, keep knitting, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi, so this is Sophie from the future, like five minutes after I just finished recording. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do the comment picker on my phone. I've never done that before, but I did, and I just did, and we have a winner, and the winner is I will put her name under it. I am not going to try to say her name because I'm just scared I'm not going to say it right. But congratulations. I have it here somewhere. It's a picture. But congratulations. And I want to say thank you so much to everyone who posted comments, who took the time to write comments. I read each and every one. I hearted all of them. I did not reply. I usually always reply and it was so hard not to reply but since I was doing a giveaway that's why I didn't reply to the comments because I didn't want my comments to get all mess mixed up in when I was going to do the comment picker so I just wanted to say 
thank you so much and it was really hard not to comment back because it was so fun to see all of your comments um so to the winner please contact me you can send me an email uh, my email is in the show notes it is cozy meadow knits i will put it here um, also at gmail.com or send me a message on instagram um, and i will if you can get in contact with me um, i will only ask you for your address uh, that i can send that i can ship this to so this this do i have it here yes your little pouch um, again, thank you to, to everyone who participated, um, and thanks. See ya!